Hey YouTube, I can't remember back. Okay, this is video six of the Hydro Super 2 teardown, inspection, and installation. Uh, today we're bench testing. Um, we've got the unit mounted, we've got it hooked to a 12 volt garden tractor battery, we've got a battery charger on it, two amps. I've taken a voltage reading on each cell, it's at 12.34 volts. Uh, after half an hour, we're running right at 11 amps. Uh, this is on a half gallon of vinegar. The rest of the system topped off with steam distilled water. Actually picked it up at Walgreens, uh, Walgreens Pharmacy. Um, it's actually for, uh, it's like nursery purified water, but on the jug it actually says steam distilled. I'm trying to do it as close as Dennis uh, states to do it um, on the ad for the uh, Hydro Super 2. Uh, we tried potassium hydroxide earlier and it was a fiasco. And it was an absolute fiasco with the potassium hydroxide, so we pretty much abandoned that effort. Uh, the first time I did it, uh, amps went through the roof, blew both fuses, um, did it exactly as they stated, but evidently this unit is so sensitive that I don't even think it would take maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Uh, for you to pipe the amps up. Um, I also probably didn't set it up correctly in the fact that I didn't cycle these cells at all. You know, I, I, I truly believe they have to be kind of seasoned like you season an iron pan. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to run it all day today with just the vinegar and the water. Keep the amps low. I'm not trying to, you know, fill the Goodyear blimp with this thing. I'm not really too worried about the um, the gas production. I'm going to season the cells, then I'm going to clean it out really good, uh, run a couple of gallons of water through it, and we might experiment with the potassium again, but at this point I'm not really sure. But since it's running decent, uh, I'll go over a few points with it and I'll show you how I've got it set up here. This is basically going to how it's going to be set up in the truck, except that the lines are going to be a lot shorter. I have learned that these lines always need to go uphill. From your unit to your bubbler, there cannot be any dips. If you get dips in this, if you leave slack in these lines, your bubbler will actually fill with water. You'll get a gas pocket where it dips, and that gas pocket will cause this thing to overflow with water, and you'll end up getting water in your gas line going into your intake. So when they tell you don't have any slack in your lines, they're not kidding. Um, get your units mounted first, measure really good and try to keep the slack out of the lines. I'm kind of trying to get these at a slope, but since I'm bench testing, I don't really care at this point. We're going to let this slide. So I'm going to pick up the camera. I'm going to give you some close-ups of how it's wired. And I've just realized that once it's in the vehicle, all these wires are going to be cut to fit, wire loomed, and it's not going to look like a cluster as it looks on the bench. But it was set up this way so you can get a clear view of how it's wired and basically what I'm getting, I'm trying to get, make you make a point of showing you that it is producing gas and there is a lot of, there's a lot of playing around that needs to be done. So without further ado, I'll show you the battery line. charger. It is set on a two amp trickle charge. And that of course feeds to the lawn tractor battery. Okay, now let's follow the positive because the positive goes to the amp gauge. Ta-da! Alright, on the other side of the amp gauge are your two wires for each cell. Now if you only have a single, you're only going to have, of course, one wire. So you follow that down and they feed right into here to the relays. Okay? Now if you follow the, the negatives up, I've got them connected here with a bolt and then I'm just using this yellow wire to the ground. Now, if you notice the two wires coming off the ground, this one's black, that is the ground, these go to the switch. Blue goes right there to the positive. There's the switch I talked about earlier. It's just fun, okay? Yellow, which is, I've heard that sometimes they're yellow on this unit, Sometimes they're blue. Anyway, that goes to the unit. That's what you have on your dash. That's what powers it. 
Alright, there's the wiring. There's the unit. There's the two lines going out. And it is running right now. If I follow it right along here, you can probably see the gas going by. They say big bubbles are oxygen and small bubbles are hydrogen. Now what I have noticed about this unit is if you watch close, it almost seems that each cell is alternating its production rate. One will go fast, slow down, then the other one will go by fast and slow down. It's a uh, kind of a neat setup how it's doing it. It's almost like it's sharing the juice, but everything's getting the same amount of uh, voltage and the amps are the same. But that leads up to my bubbler. And then that leads to my jug. Now, like I said, I'm not really concerned with how much gas it's producing right now. I'm seasoning the unit. I'm going to let it run for a while. And then once we run it, we'll start playing around with the electrolyte a little more. So I'm coming up right on about 50 minutes of run time. We're at 11 amps. Now what I can do is since I have been using vinegar, I could mix a little bit more water and I could put a little potassium hydroxide, you know, a few flakes in it and put that into the mix and see if that would make a difference. But uh, there's the built-in fuses. We got 30 amps in there. Has not been a problem once I went to the uh, vinegar and uh, redid the mix. But there's the system. And uh, we're going to let that run for a while and uh, we'll come back to it and give another video on um, if we spice up the mix a little bit. There you go.